You are a Milky Way photographer and you have done single image awesomeness for months. But if you could buy a few hundred dollars worth of hardware to become a master of greatness, would you do it? Hey guys, it's Aaron King with Photog Adventures. Today on Astro Photog, we're going to talk about the benefits of star tracking versus single image photography. All of us have this entry level Milky Way photography that we've been practicing and getting better at, Pro post processing those images, making sure that we captured them in a good enough way, you know, where you fully exposed for the Milky Way. You haven't overexposed the highlights of the Milky Way, which is possible to overexpose it and go crazy where you can't bring detail out of the core and it just becomes this muddy texture of white instead of being speckled and beautiful but we've also made mistakes sometimes where we underexpose it and we have to do so much post-processing to bring that image out and get that milky way core and the rest of the milky way truly shine in our image that we introduce noise into our photography so we've been mastering that practicing that well what if you want to become a master master, a master master of greatness? And I said a few hundred dollars, would it be worth it? Would it be possible? It is, and it's because of star tracking technology. I want to show you some images from Eric Benedetti. Check out ericbenedettiphotography.com. The link will be in below. He's an amazing Milky Way photographer. And the reason why he's amazing is because he's taken the science of tracking the stars, something that a lot of people are doing, but not a lot of information is out there with, and doing his Milky Way photography that way, creating images like this. Check this out. This right here is a shot that Eric Benedetti did in central Idaho, 30 plus images that were stitched together in a pano, and all of it was star tracking. How does it compare to another image taken? I think the same night, because see this aurora over here? There was this awesome KP6 plus aurora that was happening out there. And it was uh, May, I think it was May 30th, May 27th, something like that. And it was a nuts aurora that was so visible and so bright, it was visible in Southern Utah. This is Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument. And the first time I saw it right here over Brendan's shoulder, that's Brendan right there, is a complete surprise, I thought, is that light pollution? Is there some weird brake light, light pollution going on over there where people have red lights going? Because I never thought it could be Aurora. I'm thinking he captured this shot at the same time that I captured mine. And looking at the differences of the sky, oh my God. What are the differences? Star tracking versus single image. It's just you're losing so much. And so let's talk a little bit about that right now. When I think about Milky Way photography and I think about what I can do to control my Milky Way photography, there's a few things in my camera that you're already familiar with. 6400, 8000. These are some of the ISOs, the typical ISOs that I will use in Milky Way photography. But what these do is they just amplify the signal that's happening. The shutter is bringing in color and light. This is the element that affects color the most shutter in a camera the more time you give it to look at something color comes out and so with more time and longer exposures using a star tracker he can get these to work mine's only 13 seconds and his oh with the extra time I see only stars and the fig the faint idea that air glow exists right there but his air glow actually gets so bright and so colorful it covers up stars there's stars here that I can't even see it's a low res image but can't even see the air glow or can't even see them through the air glow and so it's nuts it's nuts there's still lots of color here now in this image I brought out the saturation and so the air glow really pops the red really pops in this one I don't bring out the saturation and so you can see that this is a little dimmer green, a little dimmer red. It just doesn't pop out as much. Well, what does Eric Benedetti do? Does he just bring the saturation slider and go whoop? And that's how everything shows up? No, thanks to the longer shutter, he's able to do more color. This star tracking Milky Way photography versus single image photography is kind of a no brainer as the star tracking photography looks fantastic compared to it, but it comes with some cost. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, it's going to come with a few hundred dollars of gear. This I think is his iOptron that he used to use. This is similar to a star adventure setup, but it's a different setup, a little bit more of a portable transportable one. And here's an example of, I think his star adventure right here. So here's Eric Benedetti, uh, Eric Benedetti right here. You can see the back of his head and this guy well you can see him here 
this is Eric Benedetti. And so he is out here doing Milky Way photography and capturing in the winter, no Milky Way at all, just the Orion constellation. Look at the detail that shows up in the Orion constellation. You got Bernard's Loop, the Orion Nebula right here, the Horsehead Nebula, and you got all this nebula reds, and this is air glow fill in the sky, but here's nebula, 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 all these awesome nebular subjects that you can capture with long exposure, bringing out the shot. Here's an example of bringing out the row of Fuki in a foreground. So you got a situation where your Star Trekker is dealing with everything moving. So here's your foreground. Let's draw it like this. Then you've got your sky. And that sky is constantly moving. So you're tracking with it. Well, while you're tracking and doing your panorama, your foreground is moving. And now you're starting to get this blurry foreground. Sky's nice and crisp, but your foreground's getting blurry. So how do you handle that? How do you work with your foreground and keep it looking awesome like Eric Benedetti's done here on top of creating a foreground shot of him sitting at a campfire? And this is just an awesome shot, man. And his row of Fuki up here, if you don't know the row of Fuki, this, ah, this plus stuff is awesome so beautiful seeing the pinks and the yellows and the blues i mean these little star nurseries that are happening out there that have all this color they su surprisingly all hang out in the same section of sky even though they're different distances from us and they just look beautiful all mashed up together and so you got the milky way with all of its cool detail the core and then these dust lanes that are kind of fingers reaching up and touching the row of Fuki. It is just a fantastic shot. Here's another fantastic shot, the row of Fuki and the Milky Way core. It is just a completely different game. Let me do the last thing I wanna talk about is just the reality of what we're dealing with with Milky Way photography. You've got a Milky Way in wireframe, basically. When we do our single image shots, we're dealing with the wireframe version of the Milky Way, and we get some detail out here, and we get some more detail as it comes into the core. It's just where it's greatest, we start to see shapes. But when you turn on a longer exposure and use a star tracker, now all of a sudden you've got this color, this crazy color that's showing up, and this color is feeling over the entire wireframe, kind of like the pictures I have are skeletal versions of a caterpillar, a fuzzy caterpillar that can be fully fleshed out and look amazing like this. And you've got these parts that are coming off and just making the whole Milky Way full of detail. We said detail, color, and cleanliness, clean being focused and sharp. you got these things all in these shots if you follow Eric Benedetti's method. And so I've been talking about Eric Benedetti a lot about this and telling about the versus versus because we have an opportunity to learn from Eric Benedetti tomorrow. And I say tomorrow, I'm sorry about that. It is just the last minute notice. And so if you see this room you see this area this is not my normal studio and the reason why is a longer story but Aaron King has been gone from YouTube for the last couple months because I don't have my old studio anymore and so if you follow the podcast or if you go to Facebook you can see the information about my recent divorce and this up here is a new office space that I have and right here is where I'm at and getting set up and so it took me a while to get everything just ready to go and so I'm telling you guys on YouTube the day before but it doesn't matter if you capture this information in a month or three months from now you can still see the entire workshop watch the replay of it you can buy it it'll be online so check it out the link will be down below but if you guys go to the link you'll come to this page and you'll see that we have the workshop tomorrow it's mountain time 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. but we'll probably go a little longer than two as we're doing post processing and Q&A Eric Benedetti is a master at this photography as you just saw all of his images the last great benefit of star tracking photography is doing something like this this is the Andromeda galaxy if you have ever seen the Andromeda galaxy it's basically this little fuzzy part that comes off of the Orion uh, the Cassiopeia constellation and so you've got this constellation that's a W over here on the far left for northern hemisphere people this is on the far left of the arch and you'll see that little fuzz that little fuzz ball right there is the Andromeda galaxy. And if you could do star tracking, you can see it like this. And I mean, this is not a dark sky sight. He captured this. If this is the exact same one he told me about, he captured this from his backyard in Salt Lake. Salt Lake City, crazy light pollution, and he captured this much detail of the Andromeda galaxy. And he took 40 images and stacked them together. 
this takes a lot of patience. He captured this image, yes, and took hours to capture all these images together and make them look great. But then 30 plus hours of post-processing later, and it looks like this. But man, it's worth it. The Andromeda Galaxy, our closest neighbor, it is a spiral galaxy like ours, and it just looks amazing amazing so if you guys are considering it at all or thinking about it come join us tomorrow make sure you're there by nine o'clock the live feed i'll send you a link for what you will need to sign up for to make sure you can access the the webinar basically it's a live online webinar workshop that allows you to talk eric benedetti will be right here sitting here setting up his star tracking gear you're going to see it up against the white so that you can see all the parts and follow along with him and learn everything that you can about star tracking photography because you know what star tracking photography is so such an amazing improvement on single image. These are awesome single image shots. I love them. I cherish them and put them on my desktop. They're right now covering my desktop with these images. But when you compare them to Eric Benedetti's Star Trek shot, it's really not a competition. So thanks for watching. I'm Aaron King with Photog Adventures. Come back for more Milky Way photography stuff on Astro Photog, and hopefully you'll be considering going for that extra few hundred dollars a gear and join Eric Benedetti in the world of star tracking Milky Way photography. See you guys. <laughs>